Hi, Room 15. This is Miss Fong. So today is Thursday, April 23rd, 2020. We are going to be measuring rectangles. So this whole week we have been working on measuring um, different shapes um, and finding the area. So today we are going to be just focusing on measuring um, rectangles. So here are our learning targets. We can find the total number of objects in an array with up to five rows and five columns using addition. We can write an equation to represent the total number of objects in an array with up to five rows and five columns as the sum of equal add-ins. Um, and then we can partition a rectangle into rows and columns of same size squares. So what does the word area mean? Area is when you measure inside of a shape. We've been using different shapes to measure the area. Yesterday we used square units. And if you remember, this is a square unit because it is the size and shape of one square. So we are going to continue to use square units today to measure different rectangles. And then we're going to be looking at arrays. Um, so we're going to apply our knowledge of area, which we've been focusing on all week, square units, which we learned yesterday, and arrays, which we have learned um, throughout the year, but also we kind of touched on arrays yesterday. So what is an array? Arrays are when squares are composed into equal rows and columns to create a rectangle. That should say a rectangle. Sorry, my friends. So here we have a rectangle. And a rectangle, remember, is a quadrilateral because it has four sides and four vertices. And then if you can see, we have our square units. And then we have um, the squares composed to create that rectangle. So let's take a look at um, and remind ourselves and do a little review of what rows and columns are. Because if you have rows and columns, then you will have an array. So let's review rows and columns. So here we have our rectangle. And if we have rows, rows go which way, my friends? Think about it. If you said left to right, you are correct. Woohoo! They go from left to right. So in this case, we have two rows, one on top and one on bottom. We have two rows and we have three in each row. So it is two rows of three, or we could say three plus three, which equals six. And that would be our total um, area for the, for the rectangle if we were just looking at rows. If we were using columns, columns go up and down, kind of like a pole in a building or like a column of a building. So if you look at the array, try to ignore that red, arrow. Let's just look at the columns. So since columns go up and down, we have one, two, three columns, but we have two in each column. So that would be three columns of two. And then if we were to write a repeated addition equation, it would be two plus two plus two, which equals six. And that would be our total area. So now let's take a look at um, this grid paper. Okay. So if I were looking at this grid paper, let me go into full screen mode. Oh, sorry about that, my friends. Okay. Okay, much better. So this is a grid paper. So now we can see all these squares that are put together. These are our square units. And I'm going to pull some squares and I'm gonna create an array. I want an array that has um, 10 total squares, okay? So I want to make sure that my rows and my columns are equal, which means they have the same amount in each row and column. So if I took 10 squares, I'm gonna start, I could form my array or my rectangle shape using five on top and five on bottom like this. And if you can see, I'm starting to form my rectangle. So there are 10, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So take a look at the rows. I have two rows, two rows of five. So I could write my equation. I could write five plus five equals ten. Or if I took a look at my, so this would be rows. Hope you can read that. And then if I'm using columns, oh my, hang in there with me while I write the word columns. This is a much longer word. All right, we did it, woohoo! So I look at my columns, my columns go up and down. So I have one, two, three, four, five columns. So I have two in each column, so I'm gonna write the num add the number two five times. One, two, three, four, five, which equals two, four, six, eight, ten. So as you can see, my friends, the area in rows is ten, and the area using columns is also ten. So no matter how you look at it, either rows or columns, the total area should always be the same because you will always end up with the same amount of shapes, okay? I have another array here, just to look at it. So this array, it's a rectangle. This array, it's also a rectangle, okay? So right now we are looking at rectangles. So here my array has three columns. I have one, I'm sorry, three rows. I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four in each row. So I have four rows of three. So if I were to write my equation for my, um, rows it would be let's write the word rows again okay i would write four plus four plus four because remember rows go this way and i have three of them one two three four 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 plus four is eight four plus four i mean eight plus four is 12, and that should be how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We are correct. Oh, my. And let's write the word columns again. Let's take a look at those columns. Why don't you look at them while I'm writing the word columns? Take a look at that array. All right. Do you have the number of columns in your mind? If you said four, you are correct. Woohoo! So I have four columns. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I have three in each column. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm going to write the number three four times. Three plus three plus three plus three, which, oh, man, it is getting harder and harder to write on here. It equals 12. So as you can see, once again, the total, oopsies, the total area is 12. Okay. So now. We are going to look at these rectangles, okay? Oh, you know what? Let me. Yep, let me clear this. Okay, so we are going to be looking at this these rectangles. So now, these rectangles, we are going to measure them using square units, okay? And then when you're measuring them, you should be creating rows and columns okay so i'm going to show you an easy way to measure it without having to cover the whole thing with squares so let's take a look at this question it says let me zoom in on it how many units this size as in this square do you think it will take to cover rectangle z without leaving any holes or gaps so now, if we were in class, I would call on you to make our estimates, meaning we would guess before we measure. But unfortunately, I can't see you right now, and you're not in class with me, so I can't take your estimates. But I'm going to estimate myself. I'm going to say, well, now, my friends, if we remember what my array looked like just now with the 12, I'm thinking this is more than 12. So I'm going to say maybe 20 maybe 25. Remember, you want your estimate to be as close as possible. So I want you to think of your estimate in your mind. I'm going to give you about five seconds to do that. Estimate how many squares it would take us to measure rectangle Z. 
All right, so I hope you have your estimate. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to measure, okay? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna measure, let me see, hold on one second. Okay, so I put some um, one row of squares and one row, one column of squares, okay? So what I would start doing in order to measure this rectangle, I would start with just run row and just one column. We've done something like this in a workplace where we just do one row and one column. And then just by looking at the squares on the top and the ones on the first column, this will help us figure out how many rows we have and how many columns. So now if we were looking at rows, remember we would be looking at them this way. Here we go. This way, right? So this would be the start of one row because it would continue that way. This would be the start of one row and it would continue that way. This would be another start. And then we already have our top row. So look how many rows that we have. Let me erase this so it's not in our way. So how many rows do we have? If you said four, you are correct. Because here's one, two, three, oops, four. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have four rows, but then we have to look at the top row to see how many we have in each row, okay? So remember my estimate, let me fill that in because I think I accidentally cleared that out. So if I were to write an equation, now look how many I have in this top row. I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have five in the top row. Do you think that that means that I would have five in each of these rows that are not filled in all the way? If you said yes, you are correct. Very nice. So I'm gonna write five for my equation plus five. And I write five four times because I have four rows of five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that would equal five plus five is 10. Five plus five is 10, or we could go five, 10, 15, 20. You can skip count by fives. Okay, now we are going to do the same thing for the columns. So as you can see, this is already one column right here, okay? So now if I were to continue, this would be the start of my next column. This would be the start of my next column. This would be the start of my next column and this would be the last column. So I have, let me change colors so I can show you. Let's use green. I have one, two, three, let me do a zigzag, four so you can see better, five. So this time I have five columns, but I have one, two, three, four in each column. So I'll be adding the number four this time, but I'm gonna be adding it five times because we have five columns. One, two, three, four. Let me just continue down here. Five, which equals, what number do you think it should equal? If you think 20, you are correct. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, I'm gonna write 20 right there. So was my estimate correct? This one was correct, this one was not, but I was close. If you said like around 50, I'm not quite sure if that would be a correct estimate. So remember, when you make an estimate, you want it to be as close to the actual answer as possible. So my friends, we just measured um, using squares, so square units. So our total measurement is 20 square units, okay? So now, um, we are going to be doing the same exact thing, but we're going to be doing an activity in Seesaw, okay? So let me take you to my Seesaw. You're going to find it in your activities, and it's going to say area with arrays. So you need to add response. I'm using a sample student. So now, here are the directions. You need to 
use this dragging button to drag the squares to fill in the shapes and find the area. So you're measuring with square units. After you find the area, click the pencil button to fill in the blank on the sentence under your rectangle. Use the pencil or a text box to write a repeated addition equation for the area of the rectangle. You can use rows or columns. You can write as many equations as you can think of to match the rectangle. Click the check to complete your activity. Okay, no, my friends. So this is one of the rectangles, okay? Remember how I said you can use kind of like that top row to help you? You want to use these empty squares down here to kind of help you. You can kind of see these squares right here. Do you see them? How they kind of match up? Okay. So what you want to do is you want to always have, if you're dragging something, you always want to have this clipped. And my friends, see how you can unlock this please do not move any of these things the only things that you should be moving are these squares okay so i'm going to use this to help me see how i line it up and you're going to cover the whole thing with these squares to measure the area now in my example we were only doing one row and one column but this time you actually are gonna cover up the entire square, okay? So, and then you wanna use these blank squares on the sides on the paper to help you, okay? This is called grid paper. And now you wanna try and not have as many gaps like I do, but we're all trying our best here, okay? If we were in class, we would actually, oopsies, we would actually just color this in. But since we're using Seesaw, we're gonna try our best to drag it in without any of those gaps, okay? All right, so now you need to use a pencil to fill in equations. You can fill in for the amount of rows, okay? And then you want to see how many you have in each row, or you can write another equation to write how many are in each column. Okay. And then if I'm going to challenge you, if you want, okay, I'm going to go back and show you how to use a um, addition equation. So let's go back to this. So if I'm using, I'm, I'm sorry, a multiplication equation. Okay. So now, if I am using multiplication, so if you want to challenge yourself and you want to start learning multiplication today, which we've sort of talked about, this is your chance, okay? So now you would have a number right here, the multiplication sign, a number right here, and then the total number of squares or objects. So in this case, it is 10, okay? And if we are doing rows, so you would have, you can have two different equations, one for rows and one for columns. Okay, so now it would be the same thing. You would have a number right here, the multiplication sign, a number right here and 10, but it would be different. So if we're looking at rows, we have two rows, okay, and then in, we have five in each row, just like our equation says over here. So let me change my color, okay? So since we're adding the number five two times, okay, you would write the number five times, oopsies, sorry, my friends, let me see how to get out of this. Uh oh, I don't know what happened there. Give me one second to figure this out. Sorry about that. Okay, so if we were, let me move that out of the way. If we were using, we're adding the number five, five times, okay? So you do five times two. And what this means is you are taking the number five and you are adding it two times, five and five. So that's why it's five times two, okay? Now, if you're looking at columns, 
you're adding the number two, but you are this time doing it five times. You see how we just switched the order, okay? Multiplication kind of acts like addition, where you just flip it, okay? So now, you don't have to use multiplication if you don't want to, okay? You can if you want to challenge yourself. Now, let's go back to the assignment. So after you do this, you have to write equations, and then you need to write your answer here. You need to do that on page two, and then you need to also do it on page three. Okay, my friends? So you need to cover up the squares, the rectangles with the squares, and then write your equation, and then check when you are done. All right, good luck.